the richest 1924 building, now part of a collective of buildings known as the Atlanta Federal Center, is steeped in history as the flagship store of Rich's Department Store, a focal point for locals as the site of the Great Tree and the early battleground in the struggle for civil rights. I'm Bill Scott, and I'm making history. Riches began in 1867 when Hungarian immigrant Maurice Reich, anglicized Morris Rich, founded a dry goods store on 36 Whitehall Street. Called M. Rich & Company, Rich had an eye for business and for serving his customers. As business grew and expansion was needed, Rich moved three times, occupying the space of 54 and 56 Whitehall Street, just south of Five Points, near its intersection with Hunter Street now the intersection of Peach Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, in 1882. Back in 1877, Morris Rich's brother Daniel joined the company, and another brother, Emmanuel, came along in 1884. It was incorporated as M. Rich and Brothers in 1901. Five years later, an adjoining building was purchased on Whitehall Street. This one, as well as the one the Rich Brothers already owned, was torn down to construct a new emporium for dry goods and furnishings. Then, in the year 1924, this was built. An 80,000 square feet of retail space in Italian Renaissance style went up in the corner of Broad and Alabama Streets, now across the street from the Five Points Martyr Station. Hence, Reed and Adler, the architects behind the building, constructed the iconic clock that we see at the very corner of the building on the second floor level. They designed a cartouche with a grill to be placed in front of it. Later, the idea of the grill was dispensed and the unique feature of the clock with the letters replacing the numbers spelling Riches Atlanta was added. With this move came an increased focus on products and customer service, even as Morris Rich stepped down as company president in 1925. He died three years later and is buried in Atlanta's Oakland Cemetery. During the 1930s, Riches supported the community during the depths of the Great Depression by giving vouchers to local school teachers to help them make it through these tough economic times. There was an additional floor built above the original six, and there was even the famed restaurant there, the Magnolia Room, which provided the best of Southern dining. During the early years of Riches' existence, the store employed blacks as well as whites and allowed blacks to shop there. However, the Magnolia Room restaurant on the sixth floor was segregated. In March 1960, the Atlanta student movement began to take form and undertook the daunting task of desegregating public facilities in the city. The movement was composed of students from the Atlanta University Center, including Morehouse College, Clark College, Atlanta University, and Spelman College. Movement member Lonnie King stated in a 2013 interview with Georgia Public Broadcasting that Riches was selected for its first sit-in, inspired by the Greensboro, North Carolina Woolworth sit-in, because it was the largest department store in the South, and it would set an example. The main subject of protest was the Magnolia Room, the restaurant that was once located on the sixth floor of the Riches building. Like other Atlanta establishments, the Magnolia Room did not allow for black patrons to be seated or served. King and other Atlanta student movement participants felt this to be an injustice and planned a protest to gain exposure to this affront to the civil rights in June of 1960. In a 1999 interview, Atlanta University student Otis Blackshear, another participant, said that Riches was targeted because it would not allow full accommodations despite having an open employment policy and a willingness to serve blacks in selling merchandise. And this is what we couldn't understand, he quoted. How generous was riches towards the blacks in terms of employment, and then why would they have certain areas where we were not allowed? Richard Rich, then the president of riches, ordered his black employees who worked in the Magnolia Room to lock arms so that the protesters could not gain entrance. Imagine the humiliation of being a black worker being ordered and threatened with the loss of your job to prevent people of your own race from entering a place where you worked. All they wanted was to fight a horrendous injustice. After the sit-in occurred and Lonnie King was arrested and sent to the police headquarters, where he was admonished by then-President Richard Rich, Rich said that if King were to return, quote, I'm going to lock you up and throw away the keys. King responded, I will be back in the fall, and I'm bringing thousands of my friends with me. King did return a few months later. On 19th October 1960, another sit-in was planned, which actually became two. One was at the snack bar on the Crystal Bridge over Versailles Street leading to the store of homes, and the other was in the Magnolia Room, the site of the first sit-in. 
Here, the AUC students were joined by an unrelated king, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. King and 50 others were arrested that day, charged with trespassing under a recently passed state law. This would be the first of Dr. King's many arrests undertaken in the cause for civil rights and equality. In a letter to Judge Webb, Dr. King wrote, Your Honor, I would simply like to say that I don't think we have done anything wrong in seeking to be served at the Magnolia Tea Room of Riches. We assemble quietly, peacefully, and nonviolently to secure and seek justice, just as any other citizen. If we lived in a totalitarian regime or a Gestapo system, I could see how we might have been wrong. But one, the great glories of democracy is the right to protest for right, so we do not feel that we have violated the law. There were other protests at other department stores, but only the ones at Riches resulted in arrests. Soon, because of a deal between Mayor William B. Hartsfield and Riches, 50 out of the 51 had the charges dropped against one. Everyone except Dr. King. Dr. King was held because he violated his probation in DeKalb County for driving without a license. He was released on October 27th after Massachusetts Senator John F. Kennedy, who was running for president, called on DeKalb County Sheriff to let him go. By August 1961, the Magnolia Room was integrated, and soon after, Atlanta Public Schools did the same thing. Two long-standing riches traditions were enjoyed by Atlantans for decades, the Great Tree and the Pink Pig. First, the Pink Pig, which was a flying pig on monorail tracks, began just after Halloween and lasted all the way through Christmas and into New Year's. There were many cars attached to a monorail on the ceiling of the toy department, placed there to free up floor space that the kids absolutely loved. It was sold to a Boston department store in 1964, but brought back the next year due to public demand. This time, there were two, Percival and Priscilla. If this was a prelude to the holiday season to come, then the great tree really brought it in. Every Thanksgiving, the great tree was lit up for many years on the Crystal Bridge beginning in 1948. The tree had to be huge, about 60 to 90 feet tall and 35 plus feet wide, so it would be clearly visible throughout downtown and even to the suburbs. There would be crowds of thousands upon thousands gathering to see singers and other performers. When a performer sings the high note of Oh Holy Night, the tree lit magically and Atlanta's holiday season had begun. The Riches downtown store will be a fixture in Atlanta commerce, even prompting other stores to move in to be competitive, such as Kessler's, H.L. Green, and McCrory's. However, this could not last forever. Riches was sold to Federated Department Stores in 1975 and after years of contraction, closed the flagship store in 1991. Three years later, most of Rich's downtown properties, including the store for homes and the Crystal Bridge over Forsyth Street, were imploded and rebuilt as federal government property. The original 1924 building was incorporated as part of the Sam Nunn Atlanta Federal Center, named in honor of U.S. Senator Sam Nunn from Perry, Georgia, where it houses governmental departments such as the General Service Administration and the National Park Service Southeast Regional Office. It is now known as the 1924 building at 100 Alabama Street Southwest. A lot is certainly changing here. For instance, the Magnolia Room went from going from this to this. A break room inside the sixth floor where the National Park Service is. The Pink Pig was essentially retired for many years until being brought back in 2004 at the Rich's Macy store at Lenox Square, north of downtown in the Buckhead area of Atlanta. The pig went on for 16 years before finally being shut down in 2021. The Great Tree was moved two blocks away to underground Atlanta when the flagship store was shut down. And in 2000, again was relocated to, guess where? Lenox Square. The Macy's Great Tree, as it is now known, still stands tall as Atlanta's Christmas tradition. But now it's lit the Sunday before Thanksgiving, probably in an attempt to start Black Friday sales early. Still, the 1924 building stands as an iconic landmark representing the golden age of Atlanta, where crowds shopped for merchandise, African Americans sat for justice, and families gathered in celebration. The memories still live for those Atlantans who have visited the store in its heyday, as well as those who worked there every day, like myself. Hi, this is Bill Scott standing in front of the beautiful 1924 Riches building. If you like this video, please like, subscribe to my channel, uh, make a comment. I will respond to you personally. And uh, the more people who like and comment and respond to this, 
the more I can make videos like this. So thank you so much for joining me in making history and make some history of your own today.